Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Peter chapter 3. This second epistle. Oh, there's another one. We read it. Beloved, I now write unto you. So the first epistle is written to the strangers that are saved. This is the follow-up on that epistle. In both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Again, we saw that last night. We got to remember. We know, but we forget. So we got to be brought to memories. We got to be reminded often. That's why we're to memorize scripture. And then when we do memorize scripture, later on we forget it because we don't keep working on that scripture. <clears throat> that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior so Christians are to go by the words that were spoken by the prophets the Old Testament and we're to go by the words of the apostles He's chapter chapter 1 of 1st Peter Chapter 1 of 2nd Peter. They are saved individuals. And we read and study the prophets. And we study the apostles writings. He didn't say anything about the law. Now we do read the law. We do. But that we're under the prophets. Because you know what? There are prophecies that have not happened to Jesus. That will happen. But the law. We're not under the law. Knowing this first, all right, the word of God, the prophets, and what the apostles are saying. Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. We'll find that in Jude 18, Lord willing. Now, as part of the street ministry that we're involved in, I've got many, many, many stories of people who scoff. Whether they come up to us boldly, whether they shout out their win of their window of their car, whether they shout out standing on the sidewalk, but they're Peter says, as we get to the last days, speaking to Christians, more people are going to turn away from the gospel than they will hear the gospel. I remember one time when we were at the, the high school in Norwich, Connecticut. During the class time in the school, they were allowed to make signs against God and Jesus Christ and come out and stand with us, scoffing us, to downrate the signs we had for the gospel. And a cop came up to me and said, well, what do you want me to do with them? I said, they got the same constitution right we got. Leave them. Let them read their signs and let them read our signs. Three years later, we're still standing there with our signs, and they've gone off and whatever they want to do. So, let God be true and every man a liar. But it's going to get worse. As we get closer and closer to the end, more men are going to turn away from the Bible. And our country has set that to getting the Bible out of the school. And the churches have done it by fables and stories that are not found in the Bible and saying where is the promise of his coming 
So the question and the scoffing is, Well, they've been saying for 2,000 years Jesus is coming. He hasn't come yet. How do you answer that? You're correct. But he is coming. Oh, he said that. No. I guess somebody lacks faith. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Listen, God has his time. God is not going to change his calendar, his appointment, just because men are, are mocking him. Now, Jesus told us in the flesh that only God knows when that's going to happen. Now, whether Jesus now on the throne with the Father knows, but we don't know. That's part of the faith. That is something you have to believe to be saved. As much as Jesus Christ was virgin born, well, I wasn't there for that. It's faith. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of what? The coming of the Lord, the creation. That God has a time frame. Do you know when Jesus was born in the manger? We were December 25th. No. You don't know that date. But I do know the date when Jesus was born in that manger. You say you do? Yes, I do. What's the date? The date that was on God's calendar. Jesus wasn't born an hour earlier. Jesus wasn't born an hour later than the date that God had set. Whatever it was. Whatever that time for Mary's pregnancy was. God says on this date you're going to be born. Now I'm going to, I'm going to think. And I'm going to throw my suggestion out there. But it was the, the Feast of Tabernacles. But I could be wrong on that. So if it was the Feast of Tabernacles. I don't know. I have no idea. Then Jesus was born on God's calendar the 14th. And it's not the American calendar. It's the Jewish calendar. That by the word of God. This is what they don't know. The heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water. And in the water. This is the world before Adam and Eve. Get some light over here. This is not Noah's flood. This is the pre-Adamic earth. This is the gap. God made the earth maybe millions, maybe billions of years ago. That's true. But man hasn't been there. And man don't know. He wasn't there. So we don't know. But we do know by Genesis 1-1 that God did make the heavens and the earth. And there was a time that the earth just stood there dead, frozen. Was there an ice period? You better believe there was an ice period. The entire earth was surrounded by a block of ice. Do you believe that? Yep. Then God shined upon it with his light. He removed that ice and he started building life. Creating life. The heavens were old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Well, what's that? The universe. After, not, after all, you guys send astronauts in a spaceship with a launch window. They need a oxygen suit to go out there. There's no air out there. There's no gravity out there. See, the matched water for me. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, perished, and in eight were saved. That's Noah's flood. So the earth twice has been covered with water. The first time with ice. And I think we can say safely that was during Satan. When he said, I'm going to say in my throne above the throne of God. And God's like, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you how much you're going to get a hold of it. Why does the moon have you know all those craters? There was something going on. But then again, that's under Satan. 
the earth was drowned out and frozen out. Then along comes man, and man sins. And the world kept sinning, and the world kept filled with, with sin, and God said, I repented, I made man. He took eight people, he said, build an ark, get in it, get in there with animals and supplies, and I'm going to drown the whole world out. But the heavens, plural, and the earth, which are now, today, present tense, by the same word, the word of God, are kept in store. So the, the earth today, God's keeping it. He's got it. Reserve unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the earth that was ice, the earth that was completely under water during Noah's time, has yet one more event majorly worldwide. It's going to burn up. Now God told uh, Noah, I'm never going to again drown the entire world, the entire earth again. There will be floods in countries and cities, but never a worldwide flood. But he never said, I'm going to burn it. Mother Earth is going to be torched by God, by the Word of God. Revelation 19 says that the presence of God, the earth, and the heavens say, we're out of here. This earth that was cursed in Genesis 3 when God shows up in his holiness with the Lord Jesus Christ, in his holiness, with Satan and the Antichrist and the beast are in the lake of fire burning already. Revelation 19, the earth says, we've had it, we're done, we can't stand before you. Mount Sinai had a contention fit when God showed up with Moses. It was burning, it was fire, there was thunder, there was lightning, the earthquake. You think your, your God is Mother Earth? You wait till Father God comes and torches Mother Earth. But beloved of God, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So God, God is very patient. 24 hours for us is a thousand years for God. That's what it says. When you got that on your calendar, and then you're going to date God by a Roman calendar of 365 days. Oh, we got to throw one day, what, every four years? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men could count slackness. Oh, God, you know, when's he going to come? He didn't come, so he's not coming. God's not slack. God's got plenty of time. But why has not God come like he said he would? But his long suffering to us were not willing that any not yeah, not any not willing that any should suffer. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The scoffers who say, where is Jesus? He's waiting for you to get saved. He has not come yet because if he were to come, you would go into hell. That God that you are scoffing loves you so much, he's saying, you're just a fool. I'm not going yet because someone needs to get saved. Someone is going to get saved. And if you want to push the rapture, get every Christian out there going all the world and preach the gospel. Not just a selected few Christians. 
man, we get out there and get everybody witness to and everybody hears the gospel and everybody who wants to get saved got saved. Boom, you can push the rapture. But no one's doing it. It's a few that are due in the, in the harvest, working. When the very last plant is picked by God for his glory, then, okay, now it's over to harvest. Now let's get like Boaz and just lay in the barley and just take a nap. But you can't lay in the barley and take a nap when there's still a harvest. But, God wants you to be saved. God wants man to be saved. That's why he sends us out there. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Who knows when a thief is going to come? Imagine God liking himself to a thief. And then he says, he tells about the shepherd and the sheep. He says, you know, those that come over the wall are thief and robbers. In the eyes of Satan, God is a thief. Because he's going to come for his people. Now, Satan don't like that. The one thing is Satan will be happy is when the Christians are gone. He will overjoy with that. Because there will be no one telling his people what to do and how to get saved and what the Bible says. That was it. But when God comes for his people, the Jews, Satan has been trying to kill them and get them gone and, and forgotten all these years. A thief in the night. In the which the heavens, plural, shall pass away. So we got above our head, we got a junkyard above the earth right now by NASA and all the space agencies. There's old satellites, there are new satellites, there are rocket pieces, there's a dog up there, there's a monkey up there, there was a rocket with a man and a woman I believe is up there. They got all kinds of space junk and they can't launch junk today from the earth until that you know that windows open and God says I'll clean all that mess for you I'll just burn it all up now if if I don't believe it so if we put men on the moon if we did well we got a space junk and a space buggy all kinds of junk that we left on the moon if we sent these robots to Mars, Endeavor, and whatever the ones, and these other uh, Hubble, which is taking great pictures, that's man's junk out there in God's place. And NASA keeps, and the, and the other countries kept sending that stuff out there. God's like, hey, you polluted my universe. It's a curse universe. With a great noise, it's going to go kaboom and go goodbye. Let's save Mother Earth. Why? God's not. God has no future plans of saving this planet. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. I wonder who's going to hear that. We will as Christians. And the elements. Science. The element. Periodic table shall melt with fervent heat burn up all the elements all the gold all the silver all the ore all the gems all in all this earth burn <coughs> you want to talk about a nuclear war there it is it's by god thermonuclear reaction They'll all go burnt up. And the earth also. And the works that were therein shall be burnt up. The houses, the buildings, the businesses. Everything that man has done. Everything he's built for God. Everything he's built for his family. Everything he has built. Automobiles. Big buildings. Cities. Empires. It's all going to burn up and be nothing. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, 
all material things on this earth will dissolve. If it's going to dissolve before the great white throne judgment, how are you going to bring it before God and say, "Well, God, this is my this is my payment for my sins." Includes gold and silver and banks and cash and credit cards and bank transactions, everything. It's all burnt up. How are you going to bring it to God when it's all burnt up? Because after that, Revelation 20, then death and hell gave up the souls that were in them. Shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What kind of person are you going to be? What are you? Who are you? What are you doing? Better be holy. You better be godly. We read about that in the previous chapter. What are we supposed to be doing? Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Lord. Paul says, Titus 2.13, wait and, and hasten for the, the blessed hope. The coming of our great God in Jesus Christ. Scripture, scripture, Peter and Paul looking for the same one. But people are scoffing. Even churches today don't are not looking for Jesus no more. Coming day of God, that's the second advent, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Now the day of God, that is beyond Jesus. We know Jesus Christ is the God judgment of the of the great white throne judgment. This is after the second advent. This is when everything is all the, the thousand years is done. Satan's been put in the lake of fire. It all burns up. And the next thing you know, there's God standing. To sit down at the great white throne judgment. And you look back and it's all gone. And when you have a soul of a man. Standing before God, the great white throne judgment. If everything burns up. If everything melts. If everything is gone. How is that guy standing before God? There's nothing around him and there's nothing under his feet. He has nothing to stand on. If he looks around, all he's going to do is see angels and saints. There's nothing. He is standing before God naked, no clothes, no gold, no nothing. And his name better be in the land, in the land book of night, night, uh, life. If not, God's going to take away, they call it gravity. How can you explain gra They said there's no gravity in the universe. That's what they say. I don't know. Well, brother, there's no, gra there's no gra gravity standing before the great white throne judgment. And then when you've been judged, God, whatever it is, God removes it and you fall. You fall into the lake of fire. That's it. That's all there is. After that, then comes the new heavens and the new earth. And death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. So that guy's standing there. There's nothing else but God and the saints. That's going to be an interesting day. Day of God when all are judged. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Peter repeated it. That's a verily, verily, that's important. Don't you think man is going to stand a gosh, a gash, a gish, a goosh, when he stands before the God that he never worshipped and never had anything to do with, didn't believe in, kind of believed in, made up his own God, had his science, had whatever he wanted to do, standing for that God, and there's nothing else to make him, because it's all gone. There is no hope. Whatever man trusts upon this earth, whether it be money, fame, riches, whatever it is, movies, uh, baseballs, whatever it is, Stuff animals, whatever man trusts in that's not God. He stands there before God and there is nothing at all. It's gone. 
And when the Bible says prepare to meet thy God, you better believe. God makes it just you and him. No material things at all. No more. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we Christians, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Titus 2.13, Revelation. When that last person is judged at the great white throne judgment, and it's done, John tells us, I see, coming from God, new heavens, new earth, a new city, new Jerusalem. And in those places that have been made new, righteousness, no more sin, no more damnation, no more sorrow, no more pain. Once that last person is judged and that last person is cast off in the lake of fire, God says, okay, now let's make it new. Let's make it righteous now. Let's make it all for my son. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things. So see, we're supposed to look for them. No matter if scoffers scoff you, you keep looking. Our present living is to look for Christ. That is to be our source, our motive. Look for such things. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Daily, if not hourly, repentance. Peter said, listen, if you, when you are found of Christ, Peter is looking for Jesus in his time. Peter is now absent from the body and present with the Lord. He's a true Bible believer today. And he writes to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. When Christ comes, if he comes in your time, be without spot and blameless. And account that the long sufferings of our Lord is salvation. Yeah, the Lord has not come. My grandma always used to say, you know, the Lord would come in her time. He didn't. It's because someone needs to be saved. Had the Lord come before April 24th, 1987, I was saved the 25th. Had the Lord come before the 24th or before then, I would have been lost in hell. We're to look for the Lord, but we're also to be active witnessing for the Lord. All the world preaching the gospel, still wanting the Lord and realizing that if he comes, when we want him to come, it'll be seven years at least the tribulation period. You say, what do you mean at least? We don't know how long the tribulation begins once we go. It may be a month, it may be two months, it may be a year, it may be they got to build that town. I don't know. But I know one thing. When I am gone with the church, the Holy Spirit comes too. And being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, no more. you got to add works in the law. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, so the people that Peter is writing to, first and second Peter, Paul has written to them. Now, is it one one of the epistles that we study we have? We're not told, are we? Peter and Paul have written to these, these Christians. And Peter said, Hey, Paul wrote you. I'm writing you. As also in all his epistles. All his epistles. So there's more than one. Thank you, Peter, for telling us that. Speaking in them of these things. What thing? Scoffers, deceivers, 
enemies within the church, enemies without the church. Be faithful. Grow in character. Do right. That's all Paul's quote. To be understood. Oh, no, wait a minute. So these things in which are some things are to be understood. You know what Peter's doing with some of Paul's writings? Peter had some of Paul's letters. Peter read some of Paul's letters. You know what he's sitting there? What did he just say? Oh, I read your letter. Wow, that is that's a big chunk of meat. And this is a man that was three and a half years with Jesus. And Peter says some of the messages that Paul gave, woo wee. <coughs> now we don't even know if this these epistles he's speaking about and the people he's if they're in our Bible. We don't know. He says some things are hard to be understood. Which day that are unlearned and unstable rest. That could be saved or lost, people. If you're saved, you could be a, new, a newborn babe in Christ. You haven't grown. grown. And it's not an insult that unlearned it. You know, you, you're growing. One day you'll get it. Unstable. Those who, if they're saved, you know, they, oh, I could lose it. Oh, did I lose it? Oh, my really, God still really love me. And then they go read Paul and like, oh, boy. But Peter's also telling us with age, you can get what Paul writes. You got to study. You got to stick to it. You got to pray. You got to grow. And then there's some things that we will never know until the Lord tells us. Unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So the, there are people that take the scriptures, what Paul wrote, what other people have written, and they have destroyed them. To their destruction. Peter is telling us unlearned men and unstable men have corrected the Bible. Unstable, unlearned men have taught the Bible and they're doing it wrong. And this, they say this is 66 AD. Oh, there's something to me, you know, they're going to stand before. Imagine somebody with a modern Bible. Standing before Jesus Christ. Have to give account that they removed his blood. They removed his, his deity. They even removed him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a Jehovah Witness standing before God and proclaiming now. Alright. Am I God or not? Uh, hell. Hell. As God will tell you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you, and then go to hell. That's destruction. There's nothing left when you go to the lake of fire. Nothing. Where their worm dies not. The Bible's in the, this is another thing, but listen, where the worm dies I can't go into that, but man, you just you're nothing in in the lake of fire. You're a worm. Ye therefore, Christians, beloved Christians, separating them that do the destruction. You know what one foundation Peter leaves about people who deceive others? And th this is a teeter totter. People who deceive, de diseased, people who deceive others, Peter is, is like, you can't be saved. There's no way you can be saved in doing what you're doing. And yet Paul tells us about to the Corinthians that Satan has ministers in the pulpit. And if he's got ministers in the pulpit, he's got people who come to your door carrying a Bible. He have a co-worker that will give you scripture. 
And just because they quote scripture, you better find out who they are. John, the, the first epistle that we, Lord will, we're going to get to, he's going to tell us, try the spirits. You're supposed to try them. You're supposed to find out, are you a good spirit or are you a bad spirit? Almost like a movie that they had, are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? Problem is, all witches are witches. No matter which witch you are. But not all people that carry Bibles are godly. There is a difference between a Bible carrier and a witch witch. Ye therefore, beloved, seen ye know that these things before, we told you, Paul's written you, I've written you, you've had discussions and teachings on it. Beware. Least ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Now that's a strong warning. Don't ever think, no matter where you are in your Christian walk, you can't fall. I can almost count on both hands maybe more people I have met through the years being saved in their pride and their boasting of their position in Christ and they've fallen and I pray for some of them I know but even it looks like they can't even get out of the hole they dug don't you ever think you are in a position that you'll never fall You might as well just have someone smack you in the head with your shovel and then hand you the shovel because you're going to go for a fall. We are not completely in perfectness until the day we die or rapture. At that point, then we can say we're never going to fail again. But until then, Satan will be waiting for you to say something like that or think something like that. Because if you pop that into that little pea brain of yours, if you say that to somebody, don't you think that Satan will be accusing you before God right away? Let me at him. And you know what? You know what Job's trouble was. The reason why I brought that up. We find out later on, Job was self-righteous. I have not done this. I haven't done this to anybody. Look, I treated everybody well. Got a little self-prideful there, Job. And Satan kicked your butt hard. And we read in Hebrews that if God's our father and we're his children and we start be misbehaving, I don't want to be chastised for pride. It'll hurt. But grow in grace. Amen. And in the knowledge of our Lord, and look at it, there's the knowledge again. Peter is telling us, know the Lord. Know Jesus. Know the scripture. K-N-O-W. That is no Pope. Know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And we never saw him marry. How's that? Peter lift up Jesus Christ. And gave us authority on Paul's writings. And Peter has told us, grow, grow, no, no, grow. And be careful where you stand. At least you fall. Great advice, Peter. And almost like your book just ended too. When I, when I reviewed this today, I turned the page like, ah, we're done already. I want more. I want a third, Peter. <laughs>